Uh, this is uh, the third and final part of uh, chapter number one. Um, in the previous uh, two videos, we have covered the first seven objectives of uh, chapter number one that is available in the syllabus. So let's start by uh, this video by objective number eight, which is a supplement. And as you know, it's only for the extended students. Uh, and that is state the evidence for brown in motion. So let's start by the procedure. So we need to carry out an experiment um, to prove, uh, I mean, to kind of provide an evidence for the brown in motion. So the procedure is first inject smoke uh, particles um, in a small glass cell. Smoke, I mean, I'm sorry. Um, number two, eliminate the cell by a filament lamp. And number three, view the glass cell using a microscope. So, um, as you can see here, uh, there is smoke from a burning straw in a glass cell. And uh, then we uh, eliminated um, the cell using a lamp. And then we viewed it through a microscope. So, what's the observation that we will see? Is when we view the glass cell, the smoke particles reflect the light ray falling on them. And we see uh, bright specks against a dark background moving in random direction. As you can see here, uh, uh, zigzag pa paths of the uh, smoke particles. So the smoke particles are the ones that move, um, um, move in this haphazard zigzag motion. So let's analyze this, analyze our uh, observation. Okay, the analysis is that the relatively large smoke particles, and as you can see here, relatively, are surrounded by much smaller and faster air molecules. And these air molecules bombard, as we say bombard, is kind of a key word that must come into your mind when you uh, hear Brown in motion. Um, so the air molecules bombard the smoke particles randomly from all directions, causing the small uh, smoke particles to move randomly. And so that was a pr uh, pretty easy experiment to carry out to prove uh, the uh, Brownian motion. So now let's go to uh, objective number nine. So objective number nine is uh, core. And um, it is describe and explain, uh, I'm sorry, uh, describe and explain uh, diffusion. So, um, the movement of particles from a high concentrated region to a low concentrated region until the concentration is equal. So, it's a pretty easy concept to understand. High concentration to low concentration until concentration is equal. So, uh, I'm going to provide two examples. Uh, diffusion can occur in different states. Uh, first, we have the diffusion of a soluble solid in water. Here, we have potassium permanganate, KMnO4. So when you put it in water, after some time, by diffusion, all the solution becomes purple. Okay, uh, the second example is the diffusion of a volatile liquid in air. A volatile liquid is a liquid that can change into a gas. So here we have uh, brown bromine, and by diffusion, uh, you will see that there is light brown coloration throughout. Um, that is the whole, uh, the bromine particles distribute throughout the whole space. So because it was concentrated here and then it distributed all and so now there is a uniform concentration throughout. Uh, that was also a pretty easy uh, objective to cover. Now let's go to the last objective of chapter uh, number one. And that is objective number uh, 10. We need to describe and explain the dependence of the rate of diffusion uh, on the uh, molecular mass. Okay, um, on the molecular mass. So uh, the rule states, this is a rule, this is kind of like, a, you have to know this, that's a rule. Okay, I'm sorry, that was the highlighter. <laughs> okay, um, let's get the eraser just, oops, you guys, I'm really sorry about that. Okay, okay, and now let's get back. So that's a rule. Um, light particles diffuse faster than heavy particles and the rate of diffusion is inversely proportional to the molecular mass of the particles. So lighter particles diffuse faster, heavier particles diffuse slower. Pretty easy, right? So here is an example, uh, a very famous example uh, to kind of uh, as an evidence for this rule. Uh, that is the dependence of the rate of diffusion on the molecular mass. We have here a cotton wool soaked in ammonia. 
NH3 uh, aqueous and we have a cotton wool soaked in HCl um, um, aqueous hydrochloric acid um, and so uh, we know that ammonia um, has an MR17 um, calculating the MR will be discussed in later videos in the chemical calculations chapter but for now, just know that the MR, the molecular mass is 17, and that of HCl is 36.5. So, according to the rule that we just said, NH3 will diffuse faster because it is lighter. And as you can see here, NH3 diffuses from A towards B, and HCl, the gas, diffuses from B towards A. And when the two gases meet at C, a white solid ammonium chloride NH4Cl is formed. And um, therefore, uh, because it is closer here, um, the white solid is far from NH3 and closer to HCl. As you can see here, it's close to HCl, but um, far from, uh, from the NH3 cotton wool. Um, so this is a proof that um, uh, this is a proof that uh, those with um, smaller uh, molecular mass diffuse faster. And by the way, that was an example of diffusion of gases in air. Uh, just a few minutes ago, I discussed diffusion of a soluble uh, solid in water, and we discussed the diffusion of a soluble liquid uh, in air. And so that was this. Uh, this was an example of diffusion of gases in air. Now, uh, since this is the end of the chapter, I thought of a nice way uh, to end it. Um, and what's a better way than a motivational quote? So that's the quote for, um, from me, guys, to you. Um, if you really want to do something, you'll find a way. If you don't, you will find an excuse. So you guys are aiming for an A star. So work for it. You need to work for it um, or else uh, you won't get it. Anyways, if you have any questions, post them in the comment section below. Uh, I'll try to answer them or, uh, or maybe another student would help out. Um, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.